Good day everyone. I am Maika Sipotane and together with Gunnet L. Kamel, we are going to discuss about the general system theory by Ludwig von Bertolanti. Carl Ludwig von Bertolanti. He was born on September 19, 1901 and died on June 12, 1972 at the age of 71 years old. He was an Australian biologist known as one of the founders of general system theory, GST. This is an interdisciplinary practice that describes system with interacting components applicable to biology, cybernetics, and other fields. He was born in Altsgerdorf uh, near Vienna. He came from a distinguished family which included many scholars and court officials. He grew up as an only child, homeschooled by private tutors until he was 10. When he arrived at his gymnasium, a form of grammar school, he already knows how to learn by reading and studying on his own. In connection to the recent reports, three of the nursing theories used the system theory like Betty Newman, Martha Rogers, and Sister Calista Roy to give a better and organized assistance to their patients. In 1918, he started his studies at the university level in philosophy and art history, first at the University of Innsbruck and then the University of Vienna. In 1926, he finished, he finished his PhD thesis titled Fichtner and the Problem of Higher Order Integrations on the psychologist and philosopher Gustav Theodor Fichtner. In 1934, he received his habilitation in theory, theoretical biology, then he was appointed private dozen at the University of Vienna. In 1938, he joined the Nazi party, which facilitated his promotion to a professor at the University of Vienna in 1940. Next is his descriptions of system theory. System theory provides an approach to understanding, analyzing, and thinking about organizations. System theory views an organization as an organism made up of numerous parts, subsystems, that must work together in harmony for the larger system to work, such as departments, work groups, business units, facilities, and individual employees can all be viewed as a subsystem of the organization. Because all that is included included in an organization is crucial to attain a successful goal. It also believes that organizational success relies on synergy. Synergy is combined output. Next is interdependence between subsystem. And next, interconnection. Interconnection within the organization and between the organization and the environment. So now, I will be discussing the characteristics of the systems theory. So first is communication. Communication mechanisms must be in place for organization systems to exchange relevant information with their environment. Second, it provides for the flow of information among the subsystems. Furthermore, communication is viewed as a system barrier which is important for the survival and growth of the organization. It binds the subsystem together and facilitates internal stability and control. Lastly, it creates organizational growth and goal attainment. Next is the systems, subsystems, and supersystems. Systems is a set of interrelated parts that turn inputs into output through processing. Next is the subsystems. The subsystems is the one who is doing the processing. And lastly, the supersystems which is the broader group including the system's universe. One example of these three systems, subsystems, and supersystems would be the urinary system. So the urinary system has its subsystems such as the ureter, the urethra, the urinary bladder, and the kidney. In order for it to better function, they need to work together for, in order for the supersystem, which is our body, to function properly. The next characteristics of system theory is a boundary. So boundary separates the system from its environment, and it has four types. The first one is physical boundary. So physical boundary prevents access. Two examples 
of this would be the security system and the authorized personnel such as health workers. So security system can be through password or through fingerprints which um, protects the certain information to be leaked. And also there is, um, it can also be related to the nurse and patient confidentiality which is um, nurses are authorized to keep the files confidential and also leak to whoever wants the information which is not allowed for them to know. And then next is the linguistic boundary. So linguistic boundary is a specialized language. So from the word lingual, it means language. So an example would, of this would be jargons or like um, the medical terminologies that um, healthcare workers use. So if a health worker and a non-health worker will communicate with each other, such as using the word hemorrhage, they will not um, furthermore understand each other, except if the, if the healthcare worker explains what is hemorrhage, which means hemorrhage is an excessive flow of blood, or it is sometimes also mentioned um, hemorrhage happens with the head of um, certain accidents that happen in the road. So the next is the systematic boundary. So systematic boundary are rules that regulates interaction such as um, when you go into hospital there is a, a system that you need to do to process in order for um, certain things that you need will be immediately assessed by um, nurses or other authority authorized personnel and then lastly is a psychological boundary next is goal directedness systems are goal oriented and engage in feedback in order to meet the goals of the organization an example of this again is the urinary system its goal is to release the kidneys waste in the form of urine in order to avoid complications like urinary tract infection or UTI this example means that it is important to know the objective of any existing system to be able to understand its effectiveness. Next is holistic view. Systems theory focus on the arrangement of and relations between the parts that connect them into the whole. The mutual interaction of the parts makes the whole bigger than the parts themselves. So holistic view is the complete and entire view of the system. It is assessed by its entirety, not independent parts, which means that um, through, um, through not having independence, um, a, whole, a whole organization may work through interacting with each other. Next is the basic elements of a system. First is input. Input is a maintenance input or the energetic imports to sustain the system. Next, it is the production inputs or the energetic imports which are processed to yield a production outcome, a productive outcome. And then next is throughput or the process. It is the work done on those resources used to produce a product. And lastly, the output. The output, exit or change exiting the system, system returns the product to the environment. So one example of this three, which is the input, the process, and the output, is when a nurse is getting the patient's temperature and its outcome was 38 um, degrees Celsius. So um, the, the process of getting the temperature is the input. And then when the nurse is, um, will write down the temperature, which is not normal, would be the throughput or the process. And then through its um, assessment that the patient's temperature is not normal, then it will then have a certain output, which is the action done in order for the patient's temperature to be back to the normal state. Next is process. Process provides a series of mechanical or chemical operations on something in order to change or preserve it. So as what I have said in the example before that um, the patient's temperature is too high, then a nurse must do a process in order for it to um, be back to its um, normal state. So next is feedback. 
Feedback is information about a reaction to a product used as a basis for improvement. So feedback is um, how effective the process is. So um, if we go back to the example of the patient's temperature, which is um, taas yang temperature, and then kailangan, kailangan siya ipanormal. So through feedback, and if na normal na din ang temperature sa patient, um, dito na din nato mabalan kung unsa ang feedback sa patient or sa iyang guardian into how effective the process and also the body would also give a feedback na ang fever kay wala na nibalik sa iyang system. So, feedback has two types which is positive feedback and the negative feedback. So, the positive feedback changes or grows the system in desired ways that amplify and enhances the system current process and negative feedback seeks to correct or reduce deviation in the system's processes. So an example of a positive feedback in an organization, so for example is um, a hospital, so it's a hospital setting. So um, many nurses have already kanang dagan na sila o na assess na patient which is ilang na natabangan na maayo. So this creates a positive feedback or a positive image to the hospital nga ang ilahang nurses kay um, reliable and responsible. And then ang example po sa negative feedback is um, um, baliktad sa positive which is um, if ever that a nurse kanang makahatag siya o um, malik na medication sa iyang patient, it will then create a negative impact or a negative feedback. So, it will then seek to correct and reduce. So, it means that um, magnita o kanang ways ang um, um, director sa hospital or ang head nurse atong nurse nga namali o gatag sa medication para makorek ang action. So, it's either iyahang tanggalon ang nurse or um, um, certain actions will be given in order for that certain situation nga dili na maotro or dili siya makakreate o negative feedback. So, both positive and negative feedback creates an impact in order for an organization to better function. This illustration shows how the general systems theory work. So, first is the input. So, input enters data for processing to produce an output. And then next is a throughput. So, throughput takes action to transform input into output. It analyzes the data and makes calculation based on instructions on given type of data. Then next is the boundary. The boundary is the limit of a system. Its function is for better concentration of the actives carried in the system. And then after every process, when output is achieved, it then returns to the environment, which the environment is the outside of the boundary and may affect the working system. And lastly is the types of systems. So first is the open system. Continuously interact with the environment, permeable boundaries or information and resources flows both in and out. There is an exchange of materials, energy, and information with the environment. So, from the explanation itself, so, um, open system is very lighter sa iyang environment. So, it cannot better function without interaction and given information within the environment. And then next is the closed system. Theoretical systems that do not interact with the environment and it is not influenced by its surroundings. That would be our report and thank you for listening. And let me leave a quote from Ludwig von Bertalanffy. People are not machines, but in all situations where they will act like machines.